Hello gorgeous and welcome to The Weirdo. Um, I'm an sommelier student who is also an ex-cosplay girl and I do videos on like femme feminism basically. So I do a lot of food videos, I do a lot of fashion videos, very lifestyle, and then sometimes I just ramble on my thoughts. And we're gonna be getting back into regular content. I actually back a little prematurely because I was going to wait until after, until after I was vaccinated to start doing regular content because I just don't wanna get anyone sick or myself sick. And then also um, I'm going out into the world and doing the regular content. So we will be going back to my original intentions for this channel in May. Hope you guys stay. Also shout outs to T Noir for recommending my video in her last video. That was, that was so surreal for me because I found out during the video, like I was watching the video at home and then I heard my name and I was just like, huh? And then I looked and I was like, oh, that's <laughs> that's me. So all the people who are joining me from that video, thank you so much. There's so many of you. That is my by far biggest YouTube video I've ever made was um, the one on, I just, <laughs> on Megan Fox and like that, it's just really weird to think about. So I'm just gonna dive into the actual content today. I've been kind of teasing this on my TikTok page a lot, like talking about Regina George and Janice Ian and just like the entire Mean Girls realm and you might not agree with me right now but just stay tuned. <sighs> we owe Regina George a big apology because she's not the villain of the story. Janice Ian is and there's a few things that are playing into that. Um, let's just talk about the first one the most insidious to me. Revenge of the Nerd Trope. It's just a very dangerous narrative that we need to break down. This is gonna be a get unready with me because you guys have seen this look. This is the same look I do all the time. So you're gonna be getting unready with me. Let me go ahead and put my hairband up, show you my products. I'll be getting up and like sitting up and getting back down and doing the whole thing. I don't have a set in my bathroom right yet, right now and I wanna have an actual set in my bathroom when I film there. This is the actual set I'll be filming for the majority of my videos. So let's just get started. <laughs> Okay, pinned my hair out of the way because I just needed it out of the way. Um, I also been thinking about doing like a wash day video, but I just don't know if anyone wants to see that. So if you do want to see that, I don't have a relaxer. This is just um, my hair. So if you want to see me wash and blow dry and straighten my hair, you can comment that down below. I'll do it. But let's get started. These are my cotton rounds. I have Marcella water. I'm going to be using it to get rid of my eyelashes. So. Why I think that the Revenge of the Nerds trope is one of the most dangerous and insidious tropes that exist in Hollywood. If you can convince yourself that you are the victim, the hero, or that the person that you're doing your wrongdoing to deserves it, you'll pretty much do anything and you'll pretty much justify anything, even if you know it's wrong because people are very much so, I'm very much so of the mind that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And um, it's not about really intentions, it's about what your outcome is and how it affected people. So let's dive into that. The number one thing that's wrong with the Revenge of the Nerds trope is that the moral of the story is that people who are popular in high school and middle school are inherently bad, and people who are unpopular are inherently good, which is a falsehood that is not the case. Just because you're popular in high school doesn't make you evil. And just because you're not popular in high school doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't. Hollywood also has a very bad view of ultra femininity. Let's get into that. Hollywood has a weird hatred of ultra femininity in general. And I think there's like, it comes from like a women in power situation. Women in power, are just like viewed as evil through this like the scope of hollywood and unfortunately a lot of women's power comes from their desirability by men and generally speaking people women who are more desirable just happen to be more beautiful and beauty and power like popularity go kind of hand in hand and so like even regards to like the patriarchy even in modern day whether we like it or not, the most, the easiest way for a woman to have any social or financial mobility or stability is through finding a partner 
and getting married. Like, you gotta think about it. Marriage was at first just a marriage, like marriage was just a business ordeal for the longest time. The idea of marrying for love is very recent and we see how that has negatively played into like the perception of women. Oh, she's a gold digger, or she's the second wife, or she's the stepmom, it, like all of that in like, like, yes, it's a threat to like the traditional family house, but what it really is about is like, it's okay for women to be beautiful as long as it's free. The second a person who is beautiful, who is female, is trying to do it for money, all of a sudden it's icky. And that kind of goes for almost any profession that comes with women. Like, teachers who are female just generally make less money. And I've talked about this before in the previous video about Megan Fox. We just kind of have this idea that women should just kind of exist for free or in servitude. And that isn't okay. That just like isn't a thing anymore. We have our own ambitions, we have our own thoughts, we have our own opinions. And yes, we like power as much as the next guy who doesn't. But it's just demonized in such a drastic way, which leads into the hatred of ultra femininity because like, if you are just so feminine in your power, then that power itself must be evil. It dates back to like Salem witch trial time. Like those women weren't actually magic. They were just really pretty. And then men decided to blame their desire over these women, not on themselves, but on the woman. You see how that's starting to get icky? So if you combine the Revenge of the Nerds idea with the ultra femininity idea, it creates this beautiful breeding ground for incels. It's this idea that you're entitled to somebody's time, even though they're not property, they're just people. And that's why this weird hatred of ultra femininity is just kind of grotesque in my own eyes, because a woman can't be just beautiful. A woman can't just be charming. She can't be likable. She can't just exist. She must be owned. And if she is trying to be free of marriage, of being in servitude, of, the, of being tied down to any one man or being desired at all, then she's evil. She's wrong. And that right there, like with promiscuity, with everything, it's just like if if a person gets too too strong, too powerful, too desired, too well like perceived, especially if they're female, and especially when it comes to the power dynamic of things, then there's something wrong with the dynamic. And most likely there's something wrong with the woman herself. If you think about it from like a Hollywood standpoint, like male-centered coming of age stories, the most beautiful woman in the narrative is a love interest because she doesn't have her own ideas. She doesn't have her own thoughts. She doesn't have her own opinions. She's just there to be of servitude to the main character, to help him grow, to help him be a better person, to help him do things. But if it's a girl and a female-driven story that's coming of age, she's evil. Because it's not about the guy. It's about the not like other girls girl competing with this girl who is highly powerful, highly liked, highly desirable. And thus, if she's doing all those things, absence of a male gaze, she must be power hungry. She must be evil. It's not that she just likes being liked. It's not that she just likes being pretty. It's not that she just likes feminine things. There must be a motive. And that is no, no. You're not entitled to anyone's time. Not everyone's gonna like you. And honestly, I generally do not trust people who are liked by everyone. There's something wrong with that. I really do think there's something wrong with that. If everyone likes you, either they don't know you're bad or you don't know who you are. And there's and when the chips are down with those kind of people, all bets are off, especially if the chips are in your favor at the time, because they'll do anything for just self-preservation. What do you think they're gonna be like when they're in survival mode? I just don't trust it. All right, so let's just do a quick recap of Mean Girls just so everyone's seen Mean Girls, right? Like, I'm just gonna do a quick recap. I'm not putting in clips of the movie. I'm a very young channel. I don't know how copyright claims work or any of that, and I've already gotten like a strike before, and I'm not trying to go down this early. So I'm going to be repeating parts of the script randomly in the video just so you can get in the real intricacies that are being missed here because I think you're like, if you're viewing the movie the way that the director and the script is intended, you can miss a lot of things that I think that we really need to go over right now. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap. Also, I'm gonna wash my face really quickly. 
Um, I got all the makeup off, but I need to cleanse my face also. And this is my Neutrogena. I never understand how the ring light works. Can you see it? Can we see it? I'm just gonna read it. It's the Hydro Boost. <laughs> it's the Hydro Boost uh, Gentle Cleansing Lotion. I love this guy. Um, I have oily skin, and um, I think that a lot of people have a misconception that oily skin doesn't need moisture. It actually needs a lot of moisture, and I like to go with this guy. So I'm gonna go wash my face, and then I'll be back, and I'll just do a recap, quick recap of me, girls. Okay, let's recap the movie. I'm also gonna be putting this face mask on, this verse. Um, it's for brightness and tightening of my face. It's vegan, it's cruelty-free, it's fragrance-free, it's dye-free. It's not free-free though. But you can gang, you can get it from Target. Um, so let's see. Basically, Katie Heron moves to school, public school for the first time, and there's lots of rules, especially in girl world, that she's not aware of, just social norms that she's not used to. And that makes sense, because there's a lot of things that if you're if you're just kind of coming into it blind, you're not gonna understand. And it's, I generally love this movie because it really talks about the stupid things that girls have to go through that make absolutely no sense and are completely just silly when you think about it from like an outsider's point of view. She meets Janice Ian and Damien. What is Damien's last name? Ugh, does he have a last name? You can't just put gay people into things. Anyway, um, and they are outsiders, sort of. Janice is actually not an outsider. She used to be very much so in until her best friend from high school or from middle school completely ruined her life by starting a rumor about her that made her very outside. And if you've ever gone to middle school in America, that's all it takes. And then Regina, her ex-best friend is now the most popular girl in school. And she has a band of loyal followers called the Plastics. And they are the most popular girls and the most mean girls and the most vapid girls, but they're also the most hyper-feminine girls on campus and everyone hates them but honestly truly wants to be them and sh they take their revenge out on these girls after regina george takes her ex-boyfriend back and they plot and they scheme to completely ruin this girl's life and then katie learns some things along the way about who what it means to be a mean girl what it means to be popular and what it means to be just a teenager in america's school system that's basically the entire plot. There's other stuff that happens, but we're not gonna get into all that today. So let's talk about the inciting incident, shall we? Okay, almost done with my mask here. I'm gonna look super weird for a while. Okay, so we're gonna talk about my first, my first main topic. The three things that happen are the three pillars of Regina's power. I'm not saying that Regina George is a good person. I'm saying that Janice Ian is a worse person and that she gets away with all of her duties scot-free. So that's what happens. Janice Ian does actually ruin this girl's life and everyone else feels some kind of like growth or like punishment for their actions except for Janice and arguably Aaron. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit further. So what happens is Janet, uh, Regina George takes her ex-boyfriend back. I'm gonna get into it. And so the three things that they end up taking down to make sure to ruin Regina George's life is number one, the army of skanks, number two, Aaron Samuels, and number three, her body. And I did it in that order on purpose. So let's talk about, first of all, the, ins well, I don't wanna get into the inciting incident until we talk about Aaron Samuels. So let's just talk about the army of skanks. I don't really see this as a negative. Those girls never really liked her in the first place. And if you, there's a video um, about this on the take where they really talk about her structured power and I don't wanna just regurgitate what they are saying, but Regina George never was really friends with those girls. She was just kind of co-opted into those girls because those girls were the other, it was like the second and third most popular girls at the school. And you can kind of visibly see throughout the movie that Regina George kind of hates those girls to begin with because they don't actually understand her at all. They're just kind of like there. And honestly, you can visibly see throughout the movie how much they actually kind of hate her. <laughs> Which, that has to be really stressful. 
Once again, Regina George is not a good person. She's not a good person. I'm just saying it must be really stressful to know that your two closest people in your life actually secretly hate you. And it must be really stressful to be on top of a system that you didn't create, that you kind of hate, that you're just kind of forced to be into to hold power. Like, that must be really stressful. So I don't really see them t like tearing down the plastics as that much of a negative because like they were like people weren't actually hurt hurt by that. But I do really want to talk about the whole Aaron Samuels thing. Okay, so I've decided that I'm gonna go away, let my mask dry because I feel absolutely ridiculous looking into the camera right now. So I'm gonna let it dry, come back, wipe my face, and we'll get into the rest of my getting unready with me, which I just, I just can't, I just can't. So I'll see you once the mask is dry and everything and I'll take it all off. And then we'll get into the, amul the Aaron Samuels thing because God is he complicit. Okay, so the face mask is off. Now I can talk to you like a real person. Aaron Samuels is not a good guy. He's not like a bad guy. He's just not a good guy. And he has a lot of shady things that are just easily swept under the rug. And I blame it on this weird dichotomy that kind of exists in our society, where men are both experts in their field, but also just incompetent. And it just depends on the scenario in which they are incompetent. And the majority of the times when they're incompetent is when it comes to their relationships with women. And it's just, men aren't stupid and we should stop pretending that they are. Let's go over the sketchy things that Aaron Samuels does during this movie that I just, that just don't sit right with me. Number one, the invitation to the Halloween party. Now this is the biggest event of the, of the entire movie. Regina takes Aaron back. Let's just dive into that, shall we? Okay, first of all, Aaron invites Katie to this party. And let's talk about how in which she invites Katie to the party. He invites her to the party. This is the party that she knows no, she doesn't even know who's going to be there or what's going on. She gets invited by him, like in a date-like fashion without him actually inviting her out on a date. Very high school move. Let's hang out at this thing that we're both going to be at that I'm inviting you to, but let's not call it a date. But also don't bring any guys with you because just in case it is a date or in case I want to make it a date, I have the freedom to do so, but I'm not tied down to actually any commitment. And that's what happened. He invited her to a Halloween party. He told her not to bring anybody else, but he never actually said it was a date. And then she gets there, he says hi, and then within two seconds, he's making out with his ex-girlfriend and just completely ignores her for the rest of the day. Literally, when he goes to talk to Regina George, or Regina George comes to talk to him, he's getting Katie punched. Do we not remember that? He says hello, he, talk, he compliments her on the Halloween costume, he says he's gonna go grab her a drink, never comes back. And we keep saying, like, I don't like the whole statement of Regina took Aaron back because it kind of implies they had no control over the situation. It's not that she took him back, is that he wanted her back because in the realm of the story she dumped him so of course if they're gonna get back together she she would have to invite him back and he would have to accept and yes he does a little pushback like very much so in the slightest of like what are you doing you broke up with me not i'm here with katie very very important choice of words here oh by the way my toner it's thatcher's it's alcohol free it's witch hazel it's aloe vera, rose petal scented, so I like to get things that are similar in scent. I like to build my own scent. If you want a video on that, let me know. I am very particular about the scents of thing, or the scents I apply to my body because I want them all to match. But yeah, let's just dig into that real quick. It takes two to tango. She can want him back. Regina George can want Aaron Samuels back all day long, but if he's not wanting to be with her, it doesn't matter. And his choice of words are very deliberate. It's not that he's there with Katie right now. It's that you dumped me. I'm confused. Oh, we want to be. Oh, you want to be back together with me? Forget about Katie. Let's think about it for real, for all. He knew Katie liked him. Regina straight up told him that fact, and he completely ignores it. The second, the second he's like, oh, you do want to get back with me? Cool beans. And also, Regina apologizes to Katie. Indirectly through Gretchen Wieners, but she still apologizes. 
Where's Aaron Samuel's apology to Katie? Oh right, it doesn't exist. Also, you can't call dibs on a person. It's not really important to the narrative to, um, for me in regards to this in to the, regards to this video, but you can't call dibs on a person. That's what Katie was doing. She was like, oh, I like him. And then she got really, really mad when he got back with his ex-girlfriend and blamed it all on Regina. When we're coming back to that entitlement thing that I deserve this, I am a good person. Regina George is popular and I am not popular, so I am inherently good. No. That is not it. You can't call dibs on a person and they have their own thoughts and they have their own opinions and they have their own life. And Aaron Samuels wanted to be with Regina over Katie. He had the option. He chose Regina and we, are, we can't just ignore that fact. So the entire inciting incident of this movie is not fully on Regina's back. It's partially on Aaron's back and he doesn't really see any comeuppance on that. And then let's talk a little bit more about the cheating. Now, Regina George is with Aaron Samuels, not because she actually likes him, but because the fear she has of Katie being so well-liked and so beautiful, and being with the most popular guy in school would damage her in regards to the social hierarchy that she's now at the top of. And that's why she takes Aaron back. And we could all understand that, but also couldn't it be the other way that Aaron Samuels is solely with Regina because she is the leader of the plastics and the most popular girl in that grade and it's kind of a status symbol to be dating her. I guess that's the way I see it. I see it as if Aaron is not actually into Regina at all. He just wants to like be her boyfriend because it means something to be her boyfriend. It's just like you're now in the popular eye of like this really desirable deeming person, even if you're not really that. Cause like, let's get back to it. Yes, Regina George is cheating on Aaron Samuels. Aaron Samuels, Regina George is definitely cheating. But Aaron Samuels was a little bit way too willing to invite Katie back to his house to study, or is it her house? I'm not exactly sure whose house they're in, but way too willing to have an alone time with a girl that he knows has a crush on him who he kind of is vibing with as well, and also the one who suggested they don't tell Regina. Right? And Katie straight up even asked him, what do you like about her? And he doesn't answer. Like, I, <laughs> I watched the scene again. He never says it. He's just like, well, why do you like her? Dude, if you don't have a reason why you like your girlfriend, maybe you should break up with your girlfriend. Like, if you are ever, like, justifying cheating on someone because they're this, they're that, just break up with them. Let's also talk about the suspicious timing of it all. Because what I'm thinking makes sense. If he's just trying to date the most popular girl, the, the timing of it is suspect, right? Like, he doesn't actually really pursue Katie until she's spring clean, until she's spring fling clean. Like she got crowned and then two seconds later, she's, he's asking her to dance on the floor, right? Like that just, that rubbed me the wrong way. Like, does he actually like either of them or is he just wanting to date the most popular girl like one grade beneath him? One more thing that might be a little bit out of order here. What is this? Right? Like why is his arm around both of them? Like that was super weird. Then he got like jealous of Kevin G, which, I love Kevin G as much as the next guy, but like, what? You're there with your girlfriend, now you're jealous of the, okay. Let's get to the third part of this. Third part of this. The body thing. This is something I put on my face on a regular basis. This is lactic acid. It makes your skin really even. So if you want like even skin and you don't need like a dermatologist, cause like there's some things that you can't just solve with random like drugstore products, but as a person who has like pretty even skin and um, could like has problems with hyperpigmentation, I really like this. This is by The Ordinary, it's lactic acid. This is what I'm gonna apply on my face right now. I'm gonna dilute it with my moisturizer. 
Um, it's just the Alvino Positively Radiant Moisturizer and has a little bit of SPF in it. And I think that I will, that all people need SPF no matter how dark your skin is. Please put on sunscreen. But let's talk about the biggest thing that I had a problem with with this movie. I'm not trying to cancel this movie. I love this movie. Absolutely love it. It's so quotable. It's so funny. It's a very rare um, depiction of an honest view of female friendships. But the body thing. I don't know, I am a millennial. I am 26, so, or 26 at the time of this video. I don't know where you're watching it. Beauty centers, when I was a teenager, were rough if I'm, ta if I'm being light about it. Like, beauty centers were really rough, like so awful. Like, I technically speaking was inside the body beauty standard when I was a teenager. But I'd like to give you a little insight to my life. I have PMDD. I have a hormonal disorder, which means that four days out of every 28 days, because it coincides with my menstrual cycle, I just straight up can't eat. My body won't process it. Like, <laughs> like I'll just, I'll eat because I crave and then I'll end up like not keeping it down. Let's just be ladylike about it. I don't know get into the details but like legit I'm involuntarily fasting for four days out of every 28 days probably kept me really skinny for a very long time and then also I was a, like a full-fledged athlete I was running on a regular basis I was also a teenager and I know that some people even when they're in their teenage years are just a little bit more fluffy let's use the word fluffy but like I was 120 and I'm 5'7". Like you could definitely see my ribs. And that was the beauty center. I was straight up underweight to the point where I would randomly faint because like my body couldn't handle it. Like, and that was the beauty standard was withering away. That's the beauty standard. And if you're a lot, and a lot of Regina George's power comes from her appearance. So I have no shadow of a doubt that if Regina George is a real person, she has body dysmorphia and most likely also has an eating disorder. And I'm not even gonna play devil's advocate here. There is no devil's advocate here. If you are f tricking a girl into gaining weight when she already has body dysmorphia, she already most likely has an eating disorder, you're a horrible human being. I don't care what she's done to you. That is awful. That is horrendous. And now let's actually get into the meat of the story here. Why Janice Ian is really the villain of this. Okay, so Janice Ian is the most diabolical person. And what, <sighs> let's dive into the differences and similarities between Janice Ian and Regina George for a second. There aren't many differences that, there just aren't that many differences. Um, before you're in like middle school and high school, I don't know if this is just like a case for me, you're kind of just friends with people who make sense to be friends with. You're, you like the same colors, you like the same things, you like this and that and the other. Because like social dynamics are in play at that point in time. Social dynamics at that point in time don't exist. So you're just kind of friends with people who are similar to you until those things come into play and all of a sudden it's like, who has a car? Whose parents are never home? Whose parents have the most money? What can that person do for me? It starts to slowly seep in and it, gets, it starts to get really apparent during middle school. And that's when the make it or break it happens. Either you're a prey or you're a predator. It's a rough go. Middle school was rough for a lot of people. And as a person who was bottom then top in the middle school dynamic, I both was picked on and picking on people. It, the puberty is cruel and makes you, it really shows you who you are. Oh, by the way. I'm drinking bubbles right now. This is Kava, I'm not allowed, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to put the, the bottle in frame or not. So I'm just gonna tell you I'm drinking Kava. Uh, also, I kinda wanna get into the differences between like different sparkling wines and their price points and what they're used for. But Kava is my general go-to when it comes to bubbly because it is not too dry, not too sweet. And the bubbles are manageable, manageable. There are bigger bubbles. I'll talk about like atmospheres per bottle in another another more sommelier themed video. But Regina George and Janice Ian were best friends when all that mattered were your similarities. 
That means they're practically the same person. And in regards to writing, oh, birds bees. In regards to writing a story, they're very much so character foils of each other. The only real difference between Janice Ian and Regina George is their placement in society. Everything about them is very similar. Even if you like look back at the way in which they interact with Katie, they pretty much are treating her exactly the same, like a little piece of Play-Doh they can mold. And um, they create a monster. <laughs> they create a monster. But yes, they're exactly the same person. And yet we're okay with viewing Regina George as a villain. But even though like, let's really talk about it. Janice Ian was pulling public streams. She was, it was her idea for Katie to sit with the plastics and to stay sitting with the plastic. So you really look at the movie, Katie Aaron didn't want to do it anymore. She was like, it was cool to meet them. They seemed kind of nice, but I kind of like you guys. So I'm just going to stay with you guys. And Janice was like, no, continue sitting with them. Janice got her to, Janice got Katie to skip class. Janice got Katie to actually be a plastic. Janice had a full on James Bond villain monologue at the end of the movie, at which point she's lifted away. Like when I say that she got to be a full villain and got none of the heat, I'm thoroughly upset that she straight up ruined both Regina George's and Katie Heron's life. Cause she outed her to everybody and then had the nerve to be mad. Yes, Katie did not invite her to the party, but she really couldn't. Like at the time that she didn't really know if her station was secure. Cause it really wasn't. Regina George was still kind of like fighting for power back. So she couldn't actually invite Janice or Damien to that party. This was a plastics party. And it was last minute, it was during the art show. So would Janice have even come to that party? I just think that these small slights that she's that Janice has faced has fueled this kind of deep-rooted rage that both her and Regina George share. <laughs> because maybe this might come off a little insensitive. But a rumor started about you in the seventh grade causes you to completely demolish a person to the point where you're literally feeding them candy bars to make them gain weight knowing that they have body dysmorphia. It doesn't just, it, does, it doesn't feel equal to me. It just doesn't feel equal to me. Like, she went zero to 100 real quick. Janice went zero to 100 real quick. And I honestly don't believe she actually liked Katie ever. I think she thought of Katie as an opportunity to finally get her seventh grade revenge. And that's messed up. Like, I know that Regina George didn't like Katie either, but like, let's, I think that's the thing that pro that bothers me about the movie, like, or not even about the movie, maybe about my own reading of the movie at the, the first time I viewed it, is like, how did I not recognize how horrible Janice was until way later? Like, it took me a really long time after multiple, like, too many viewings of this movie for me to realize how horrible and how how similar Janice Ian is to Regina George. <laughs> like, same exact person. Only person in the movie who gets a victory and somehow also punishing her friend for not only aiding and abetting her vendetta against a person, but also outing her to the entire school and deciding not to talk to her just doesn't make sense to me. Like, are you for real? You made her like this and now you're mad at her for being the way you made her? Girl, get over your freaking stop mess. Like you did this, <laughs> you did this. She really did just do all of it. And she's, I think what makes Regina's Ian the most, what makes her, the number one thing that makes her worse than Regina George is that Regina George is doing it out of almost like self-defense. Like she's being attacked on a regular. Her place in society is so fragile that she, all of her friends are not actually her friends, but people that she could, she views as future enemies. She is on like survival mode on the, like she's at peak survival mode where she's just thinking, okay, what are my next moves? She's become so pragmatic that she doesn't have any feelings left, but rage. Janice motive, is a rumor from seventh grade. That's it. Like she doesn't really care about the whole Aaron Samuels thing, like at all. 
like in the slightest. Like she doesn't really care about Katie in the slightest. All she's thought about is like, ooh, how can I get back at her for this one thing? And I think the last point I wanna make in this movie is that there are two kinds of evil people in the world. People who do evil things, and people who see evil things being done and don't try to stop it. And I just think that Janice Ian does a lot more evil things than Regina George does. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'm completely undone. Um, for all the people that are joining me out for the T Noir video and all the people who are returning, who are just my regular subscribers, I just wanna thank you so much if you made it to this point of the video. Next week's video, like I said, is gonna be regular content. So be prepared to see me not inside of my house because I got the Pfizer. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why we have picked teams on that. That's so dumb, but like, of course my bougie butt got Pfizer. So we're gonna be going out <laughs> um, on the town. I'm gonna be showing you some cool things to do around DC. I'm very upset that I missed Cherry Blossom twice because of the pandemic. Cherry Blossom Festival is my favorite thing. If you know anything about me, I love teas and Cherry Blossom Festival is the peak tea time for um, DC. I will probably do a tea time video in DC, probably at the St. Regis because it's my favorite place to get tea besides the Russian Tea Room. And if I do the Russian Tea Room, maybe I'll do like a video where they're both by each other. But I just want to get back into my regular content. So I, I will continue to do videos like this. I love talking about just social dynamics and Hollywood and movies and how they intersect in a very beautiful way. And also I just want to just, it is, I am still in complete disbelief about the amount of people that are following me. But by the way, if you want to follow me, I am on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. It's all the weirdo and I'll put all my tags at the bottom plus a couple of videos that I think relate to this topic. I just want to thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you when I see you. I love you guys and I want you guys to stay safe. See you next time.